Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Let's look at uh, um, the population of Nigeria once again. This time around, we want to look at the divination of population. Then we look at um, we look at the divination of population. We also talk about the reason for high population in Nigeria. Reason for high population. Then we talk about population quality. Population quality. Then we talk about population movement. Yes. So, when we are talking about population, population can be defined as the number of people living together in a geographic, geographical area at a particular period of time. Let me repeat myself. The number of people living together in a geographical area at a particular period of time. So, having done that, we now know what population is. Then we look at why is it that Nigeria has high population? What are the reasons? What are the factors responsible for high population in Nigeria? Number one is what? Number one reason is religious factor religious factors religious factor can be seen from different angles some religion permit their followers to marry more than one wife that is the practice of polygamy so in doing that you know it leads to what high population growth number two improve health care improve health care also lead to what to high population in nigeria when we have improvement in health care today people can access primary health care during delivery they can go for antenatal they can go for postnatal and all other type of health care maybe at very close to their destination at relatively less cost compared to in those days so because of this the rate of you know mortality has dropped drastically because some of the killer diseases that ravaged the population you know, in olden days has been managed and put under control so improve health care also lead to what to increase of population or factor responsible for high population in nigeria number three we have um availability of food availability of food is also a factor that lead to high population in nigeria also, we have uh, number four, we have um, government, government policy. Government policy now encourage people to settle down, get married on time, and also give back. So these factors encourage high population in Nigeria. Now, Let's look at what we mean by population quality, the quality of population. Anytime we are talking about qual population quality, we are talking about the number of people within this population 
that are independent and they can contribute meaningfully to the world, to the entire populace. For instance, if we have, you know, 500 people in a community, to determine the quality of that population, you now, see, you now find out how many of these people are gainfully employed, how many of them are well educated, how many of them are, are, can provide the three square meal for their, for their family, and how many of them are well informed. So well, before you know or identify whether a population is okay in terms of quality or not, number one, look at educational, you know, educational attainment of the population. Number two, look at employment, how many of them are employed. Then number three, look at the standard of living. So these are the yardsticks to measure the quality of what of population in any given uh, uh, population uh, environment. Now let's look at population movement. Population movement is simply the movement of people from one place to another. And we have types of population movement. Number one, we have migration and we have immigration we have the movement of people from one place to another is what we call migration but under this migration we have immigration and we have emigration immigration is what is people moving from other countries into another country for instance when we have people moving from niger moving from cameroon into Nigeria, that type of movement is what we call immigration. But another way around, when we have people moving outside the country, leaving the shore of the country outside, we call that type of population movement as what? Emigration. That is, people move away, move out of the country. So when we are talking about immigration and emigration, what we should know is that it must involve the cross crossing of borders that is geographical borders but when we move from one state to another that type of movement is just migration that is not emigration or immigration but emigration and immigration must involve the crossing of geographical borders between two countries so that is what we mean by population movement then, what are the forms of population movement forms? Number one, we have the rural-urban migration. Rural-urban. Number two, we have the rural-rural. Number three, we have the urban-urban. Number four, we have the international migration. Then, number five, we have the transhuman. Transhuman migration. Let me explain them briefly. I want to just explain them. If you look at the, the way the name goes, you can even explain it yourself. When we talk about rural urban migration, we are talking about people moving from rural areas to urban centers and who are the people that are involved in this they are the job seekers moving from the rural areas to urban center looking for what looking for a white collar job then we have rural rural migration this type of migration is the movement of people from one rural area to another rural area and the people involved in this place they are the what maybe the local farmers they have maybe farmed in this location, locality, and they discover that the land is no longer fertile again. They can migrate to another local, uh, locality so that they can continue their farming. Then we have urban-urban. The movement of people 
from one urban center to another urban center. And the people involved in this type of migration, they are the working class. Either they have been transferred or they changed their job from one urban center to another urban center. Then we have international migration. This one can be country ambassadors. They are sent to go and represent their country in one, uh, in one country. They move there with their family. Or people decide to go on holiday, holiday resort, to go and rest, you know, in some countries so that during holiday. That type of migration is what we call international migration. Then we have transformer migration. This one involves the nomadic uh, Fulanese or the nomadic farmers. What happened here is during dry season, they carry their cattle, their family, and they move upland where they can see grasses and patch for their for their animals. Then, then during rainy season, they move from the upland down to the lowland. This type of movement is what we call transhumans migration. So these are the type of population movement that we have. With this, we have come to the end of, you know, our uh, po po population study in Nigeria. But before we close um, this, finally, let's look at population data. How do we op obtain a, pop a, a data about the population? The only way we can obtain data of population is to what? Is to conduct census, as I've informed us in the earlier discussion. Is to conduct what? Is to conduct census. That is the only way. And what is census? Census is defined as the legal county or the head count of the indigent of a particular country irrespective of your gender, your age, your religion. So whether you are able or disabled, provided you are an indigent of that country, in census, it's a legal head count. And it has to be done within an interval of 10, uh, 10 years. And what are the importance of, you know, population census or studying population or knowing the population of a country. Number one, it leads to what we call better planning. Once the country or the government of a country knows the population of the citizen, you know, it can plan for the development, infrastructure development, provision of amenities. So it leads to proper planning. Number two, it also leads to development you know at times some development are lopsided there are some places that are well developed others are not developed but when you have population study that you have a good knowledge of population of a country it can help you to adequately distribute the available amenities equally these are the advantages of and it will also help us to know the number of unemployed in the population. We talk about population quality. One of the yastic of knowing the quality of, a po of population is the uh, em employability of the population. How many of people? How, how many people are employed within the population? So it is only the population study or conducting a census, having a, a proper planning of or having, having a, pro, a proper knowledge of a population that can make us to know the quality of population. It also exposes us to other demand like healthcare. Where you have, you know, large population, it will make you to provide healthcare for them. So these are what we're supposed to know under the population of Nigeria. So we have look at the divination look at the reason why we have high population in Nigeria, we look at population quality, population movement, and forms of population movement, and also population data and census. So this has brought us to the end of population in Nigeria, and we are going to go to another, another topics.